some locations are so infused with paranormal and ghostly happenings that the police are occasionally called out to investigate them to the point where it almost becomes a regular occurrence. One such location is Peterborough Cathedral in Cambridgeshire in England. The cathedral as a religious centre goes back to the 6th century as a monastic outpost set up by King Peda who is the son of the last pagan king of Mercia, King Penda. It's not known for sure if there was another pagan site under the foundations of where the monastic cathedral site of today would be later built. It would appear to be unlikely as the land was marshy although we do know for a fact that a major Roman garrison was stationed nearby as this was the heartland of the Iceni tribe and their war against the Romans led by Boudicca. The cathedral itself is one of the most impressive Gothic structures in England. Originally a Catholic cathedral, it is now the seat of the Anglican Bishop of Peterborough and is dedicated to St. Peter, St. Paul and St. Andrew. The architecture we see today is mainly Norman, having been rebuilt in the 12th century. The front facade, with its three enormous arches, make it quite distinct looking from any other cathedral in Britain. Built mainly of limestone from quarries nearby, the cathedral itself contains Many features inside are typical of such Gothic cathedrals. The columns holding up the arch ceiling to represent the old woodlands of the Druidic groves, which is common within these structures. It also is the place where Catherine of Aragon is buried since 1536, one of the wives of Henry VIII. To this day, grave is still venerated by visitors who leave pomegranates and flowers on her tomb. The body of Mary, Queen of Scots, was initially buried here for a while after execution nearby, but that was later removed to Westminster Abbey under the orders of her son James I of England. Regarding the energy and the feeling of the cathedral itself, it is rather daunting, and I found myself not feeling particularly pleasant there. In terms of the paranormal activity of the place, what makes it interesting is that the sheer variety, everything from invisible choirs singing to little girl who was apparently murdered on the site, to numerous ghostly apparitions and constant lights. As you know from my other work, I'm very interested in the idea of stone containing memories. And what makes Peterborough Cathedral so interesting in this respect is not only the frequency and the abundance of paranormal activity but it also reminds me a lot of the 1972 British TV drama The Stone Tape in which a TV production crew accidentally trigger ghosts inside an ancient building and then go about filling it full of equipment that will actually release these memories, these ghosts and these various apparitions trapped within the fabric of the stone with eventually disastrous consequences. This is not a new idea. The process of psychometry, of reading memories in stone, has been around a long time and has fallen out of fashion in recent years. But it's also a subject that needs to be studied more deeply, as stones, because of the crystalline structure inside them, do appear to be repositories of some kind of psychic energy that, under certain conditions, be they climatic, energetic, thunderstorms, or even triggered by psychological intensity through psychic attenuation are these ghosts or apparitions or lights released. Peterborough Cathedral is certainly one place that has this in abundance. <laughs> 